Hello and welcome to a Taylor's Tales podcast. This is Chris Corner. I'm your host, Chris Taylor, and welcome back to a brand new episode. This week, I'm talking about mental toughness and the usage of Bankai. In this case, I'm going to be talking about hardening your mind and going from zero to hero, basically, pretty quickly, just utilizing this big old noggin up here. And that's you know, that's the hardest battle, but I want to do, I want to start off with something that's happening that's pretty exciting right now. If you're not aware, uh, Truid Haynes, Cameron Haynes' son, is currently trying to break the world record for most pull-ups done within 24 hours. The last time I looked on the clock, he was 1,666 pull-ups in, in just over four hours. An amazing pace. He's on task for that 8,100 he's aiming for, and I think this suits the podcast really well, the subject line, the incredible task he's taking beforehand, also beating Goggins's previous uh, record, which was held uh, in the mid-2000s era for 4,000, I think it was 4,500, something along those lines, so as you can see, it's quite a bit of a jump uh, over that period of time, but the science has got better since those previous records were held. There was also the I, the usage of gloves and, and the calluses. Goggins tore his hands to pieces during his first and second attempt, and even in the third attempt, he had to take some serious damage to his body. He's also quite a heavy guy back then. He was, I think he was in the similar weight to what I am, and Truid's currently weighing in at around the 170s and pounds. I believe that's in 75 kg or something on those lines, so a full 10 kg lighter than myself. Um, it's quite easier to be able to do that. He's doing the right thing, by the way. I'm not knocking him at all. I'm saying that's the right thing to do, to be lighter so that you can pull yourself over that bar and to be able to take the damage. It is a little bit like marathon running in the sense you have, when you're lighter, it makes it a hell of a lot easier to be able to get uh, faster and to be able to get those miles in at a quicker pace. Not that you can't do it when you are heavier. So it's just a set of mindset. I think this is really good to, to jump into as well because it is a, a mindset. Can I do this? How am I gonna do this? Let's get it done. Let's be practical. Let's do, 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 do. <laughs> and it takes away the the scariness of of the number because when you think of a marathon or or an ultra marathon or a hundred mile race or what trades in with a you know eight thousand one hundred pull-ups it makes it easier if you break it down in your head and you try and just do for him in, in his case he's doing seven minute seven pull-ups on the minute and it gives himself a full minute rest afterwards and by allowing that it actually really shortens that mental barrier that you're going to be having when you're tackling such a big task i think there's science behind the idea of being able to break things down into smaller pieces makes things a lot easier for people to be able to mentally get over that hurdle so i'm not just you know chucking pin you know pissing into the wind a little bit and just going like yeah here's some knowledge <laughs> it is actually factual unlike a lot of the stuff that i've spoken about before where it's just based on opinions this is this is actual science but why have I decided to talk about mental toughness now? Well, it seems to be something of a theme throughout a, a lot of my podcasts in terms of weightlifting, running, uh, and just genuinely getting stuff done in terms of my degree, all of the, all of the you know, life in general. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't have to be exercise. It can be a lot of things. To see something through to the end takes a little bit of mental toughness. And it's very easy to just sit back and just say, I'll sail through life, you can easily do that. And you can enjoy that mediocrity, because that's what you are aiming for. If you just do the same thing day in, day out, without challenging yourself, you are setting the bar low, and you can do better, and I think you know that. But if you are, like myself, constantly aiming for higher goals every year and trying to accomplish them, then you'll be thinking to yourself, then what does this guy have to say about mental toughness? Well. I didn't realize how much it came into a factor until 2020. So I'd been training for going on five years running at that point and then three years weightlifting and, and calisthenics. And by that point, I realized because of the pandemic, the pandemic allowed me to journey inwards and journey into that. I'm on my own. There's no one here. It's just me. And I had a conversation with a friend recently and she and me 
really uh, understood that a lot of the task is actually just up here, up in your head. You're battling yourself. And it was really interesting to think about. And I, I, I'm just fascinated by this idea that if you can get over your own flaws and own just barriers that you're creating, then you can achieve so much more. It was always me who was stopping me from accomplishing my previous goals. I always used to think to myself when I was younger, like there was an external force in some way targeting me. You know, when you're a teenager, you feel the world's against you, all these things, and the weight of the world is on your shoulders. You can see it that way, or you can see it in a positive way. Now, this is where I get into the whole theoretical bullshit sort of thing where people will be like, take a step back and be like, okay, I'm clicking out of this video right now. That's fine. It's a magical place. This is where you can take the idea of the weight of the world on your shoulders and you can utilize it for actually something that's kind of interesting. So for instance, let's say you are doing some intense workout or you're just getting started, doesn't matter what it is. If you can take something for instance, in my case, if I go a little bit psycho and I say I'm going to take the weight of my family, my friends, all of their dreams, and I'm going to put them on my shoulders and I'm going to complete what I'm going to complete today by doing so. I feel the burden of them. For me, it invigorates me. It makes me feel very just powerful and knowing that I'm leading the charge. For other people, it may sound too much. I've been told before, but that's just too extreme, Chris. That's just too much. I don't want to think about that. That's just too much, dog. But every person who's been super successful in their field has that extreme mindset. It may not be real. It may not even exist. It doesn't matter. It may seem like fairyland. Woo! All of them. Look at look at the beautiful face. Oh, look at me! I'm making people happy. I'm the magical man from Happy Land in a gumdrop house at Lollipop Lane. It doesn't matter. The idea is that if you can utilize fantasy, you can generate some serious grinding in reality. Now, Jocko Willink has good. David Goggins has Goggins mode. Cameron Haynes has keep hammering, and I have Bankai Ego no Akuma Bankai 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 And that for me may sound really silly. It may sound so stupid to be what doesn't matter. The point is, is that if you can generate something that allows you to release a level within yourself, like a, I call it the abyss. You go into the abyss and if you can come out smiling, then you can truly have tackled the demons that you have within you. Now to many people, that won't make a lot of sense. To the people who do understand are the people who can go through extreme levels of pain and come out knowing that it's made them a better person. That is the simplest way to think of it. If you can get through something as simple as, for instance, taking out the garbage, you're just like, oh, I'm just taking out the garbage or I'm making my bed. This is why when I originally got, originally got into Jordan Peterson, it was because of these ideas of if you can do something simple, you can build upon it and it can become almost like a just a snowball effect of your life. You do these small positive things over and over and over and they all build up one after another. You just like bang, 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 bang until you have a stack of things that you've done at the end of it. And that's why I found it so powerful. And if you can build this fake world in your mind, you know how they talk about uh, mind palaces for revising and stuff like that, you know, silly stuff. You think of it as a, a silly thing when you're a kid. But if you get into the adult world, Sometimes it's actually really good to be able to, you're not able to, there's nothing external that's going to help you get through tough times. Your friends, your family, they're not always going to be there. And it's going to be the same with, you know, food, water, all of these, they're not always going to be there. So you have to generate something within you. 
And this is the mental toughness I'm talking about. And yes, it may seem silly. Diving into the abyss. Oh, he's so... You know, he's just too much. It doesn't matter. If you can look at it, I'm going to become a demon today. I'm going to go into that. I'm going to channel that the bad stuff within me. And it is... I think Goggins has said this as well. Ringing out the t-shirt of sweat. Getting rid of the bad stuff within you. You know... Evil can't stand a 10 mile run. I love that. I love that saying because it's true. And that's why I create, utilize Bankai, like the idea from Bleach of transforming into your full potential. Because that's what Bankai means, it's full release. It is the idea of you channeling all of your energy, all of your power into this one moment. And a good example for me, you may be saying, Chris, that just doesn't make sense. There's no practicality behind that. Well, on, au contraire, mon frere. Um, that when I was at mile 25 of my marathon, I was depleted, low glycogen storages, all of the practical sciences that would apply to me. My legs, they were fading. I was at an 840 pace at that time. I'd been running at that for the past two to three miles. And so you would think that I would be done. I would be just running at that to the end. You'd be wrong. Because I activated Bunkai, that mental barrier, and I wouldn't, I saved it for that moment. I saved the power within me, that mental fortitude, I tapped into it within that last mile. And I went from an 840 pace all the way down to a 740 pace. Just by doing that. Just by, and you may be saying, Chris, but that means you had the energy, you just didn't use it. No, it was the mental fortitude, the mental power, the mental toughness to be able to say, my legs are done, my lungs are done, I'm an asthmatic, I have no way of doing this. My blisters all over my feet, actually that's a lie, I only had two, like one on each foot, but it doesn't matter. The, the point being is this, if you can generate that power, you can do incredible stuff. It doesn't matter whether it sounds silly or not. And I'm hoping I'm gonna reach one person. One person will realize that they have that ability to tap in to that extra level. And it's gonna take a long time to be able to get to captain level. Because that's what I am. I'm basically, within the exercise world, captain level. I have access to Banco, the full release. There's lieutenant level with Shikai, and then there's power below it. When you're first beginning, you won't even be able to comprehend this because you haven't pushed yourself to the very limits of your capabilities. And you'll look externally. We, my, myself and my friend were talking about this. Everybody looks for personal trainers and nutritionists and all of these things. They're not gonna help you. You have to help you. You have to do the research because if you're looking, you're asking other people questions, they're not always going to be there. You're not going to have somebody looking after you when you're eating every meal. You're you're there for your, by yourself for the 23 hours of the day that you're not with your personal trainer. I will never have a personal trainer. I'll never pretend to be a personal trainer either because I don't believe that it would work because all of these personal trainers on YouTube, sadly, they're selling the same plan and if I'm honest, it's pretty shit. It's not hard enough. Number one, people, 90% of people don't work hard enough either. You're wrong. I don't believe you. Which is hot. You know, for you, the listener, that's probably shocking to hear. But most people just aren't willing. They just want to look good. And they're not willing to put the mental fortitude side in and go beyond their capabilities. That's why I try and train seven days a week. So many people you hear about rest day, rest day. When do I get a rest day? And you may be thinking I'm repeating stuff I've heard, but it's true it's it's facts you don't need a rest day your body gets eight hours if you get that eight hours sleep in you follow the eight hours of sleep and you read why we sleep you know by matthew walker and dr matthew walker sorry i should say that the premise there dr matthew walker is right your body that's the best performance enhancer there is you don't need to take peds you don't need to you know if you get your nutrition on course you get your eight hours of sleep in and you work out every single day and it doesn't by the way you know for me this works you are going to find your alternative for me the the process for me is three cardio days four weightlifting days and then obviously a sprinkling of walking 
you know, to, to get my 10,000 steps in because I'm currently going through a quote unquote cutting slash, you know, lower calorie phase. It's not, not a big deal. Nobody cares. Nobody. The point is, is if you can build consistency, this is the thing. This is what gets me is someone will say, oh, I'm going to start off by training three days a week and they'll do three days, three days a week or four days a week or whatever. And then they will start being like, oh no, I only got two days in. Oh no, I only got one day in. Oh no, I'm gonna stop because I couldn't get the full three days in. But if you do the seven days, there's no excuses. And you may say that's a big, too big a task for most beginners, but it doesn't make sense to me. If you want something, you will challenge yourself to the very limits of yourself. And if you don't have that mentality, then you're gonna lose straight up. I lo lost a lot when I was younger. I didn't have the mental, fortitude and toughness to be able to be a better footballer growing up. I wish I had been. I wish I'd trained harder. I wish I'd practiced shooting in my back in my back garden more. I wish I'd run up and down and done sprints and all the things. We can always wish, we can always, you know, say it was in the past. But today, today is all that matters. Because let's be honest, you know, nobody gives a fuck about yesterday. Everybody cares about what's happening today and what you're doing and how well you're doing. And you can utilize the external world of what everyone else is thinking, but what you should be thinking about is how can I make myself proud? Because at the end of the day, that's who you're gonna to have to answer to. No one else, there's not gonna be anyone else there. This is why I love getting inspired. I talked about this in one of the previous podcasts, get inspired. Drew Haynes is doing 8,100 pull-ups. That is insane. If that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. Like. There's, there's so many people on this earth who are incredible athletes, incredible people who aren't even getting paid to do it. They're just doing it because they want to and because they're powerful and they want to show the world that it can be done. And that to me is inspirational and shows that mental fortitude, that mental power. So when I say bunkai, bunkai. and when I say looking into the abyss, that's my way of doing things. Goggins has Goggins mode, like I said. You're gonna find your own mode. You're gonna find your own way to access that level within you, but it's gonna take time. It's not easy for me, for myself. It took eight years before I got the marathon. It's taken me five years to be able to get to the muscle mass that I'm currently in, and you will never be satisfied. I mean, I'm lucky. I look at myself, I'm like, great, I'm in a great physique, but I can do better. And you know you, you have to have those moments of reflection and say to yourself, like, I'm doing good, I can keep going. Keep pushing the mark forward. And I get passionate about this because people are, you know, most people just, <laughs> they sort of flutter through life. They rely on other people. They say, this person knows better or that person knows better. Or instead of saying, I've done this and showing a list of achievements. Look, look at, look at all the stuff I've done. Look at it, look at it here. Behold, my stuff. And, you know, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for consistency. I'm looking for people who will continuously push themselves further. There's nothing that annoys me more than two, two things, really. Number one, people not doing cardio. Do your friggin' cardio. I don't care what type it is. Please, for the love of God, don't just do walking because that doesn't get your heart rate to a level where you're going to build cardiovascular power. And that, to me, doesn't allow your heart, your mind, and also just all-round mental fortitude. So don't allow... Yes, there's some amazing stuff on the internet to be able to help you. And I, I recommend you do the research first. Start by implementing your own routine. Utilize some of the knowledge out there. But if you allow yourself to think that you can't get into good shape on your own, just because you're not a fitness professional or an athlete or a PT or any of these things is sadly to say, and I don't like swearing on this podcast, and I've done it twice already, but bollocks, absolute bollocks. You can become the best possible version of you by pushing yourself forward. And if you are not willing to put all of your chips on the table and say, 
I'm all in, then you've already lost, sadly. It's not something you can do lightly. I'm dead serious. People, So many people are just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, you know, it, it's, I'm quoting Guy Ritchie again. Oh, look at me. Look at the world. Look at the, <laughs> oh, look at all the shiny things. The world influences you. The external world is I'm asking you to tell me who I am. And it's either you make something out of it, out of the scenario you're in, and enjoy the game. Because you're in it, mate, as Guy Ritchie said. Don't hate the, the player. player, hate the game. Don't hate the game. Love the game, because you're in it, mate. And if you can't make something of the game, if you aren't willing to make a better version of yourself and use that mental fortitude and do the same thing over and over again. My, one of my mates, a good example of this is I was doing some airsoft with one of my close friends, Jordan Green. And Jordan and a friend were standing on the side. I've told this on the podcast, this has been said on the podcast before. And I did, there was a, a circular sort of turret area where you had three sentries all shooting out from all angles and you had to jump into the middle of this. And I kept doing the same route over and over again. And one of the guys said, that has the guy heard of doing the same thing over and over again is insanity. What he doesn't understand is that if you do that and you find a way of doing it, you will eventually accomplish your mission and you will eventually lead you to mental hardening. Because if you can do tough things over and over again, if you can eat the right foods, if you can find consistency for yourself, then then you're on the road to greatness. Because to me, mental toughness is lacking. I don't know many people who have it. Out of all my friends and family, I don't know anyone who has the same mindset as me, sadly. Um, it is really sad to see. I would love to have some partners in crime out there. This is why I talk about Goggins, Sat Cam Haynes, Truett Haynes, all of these other people who are doing massively greatly because I'm just keeping pushing that boundary forward for me personally. I don't know anyone who has that mental hardening, sadly. It just doesn't exist from what I'm aware. And you can tell me otherwise. I'd love to know it if you have this just want, passion, and consistency. If you're somebody who's trained for five plus years or eight plus years or whatever, and you have that consistency built up, then congratulations, welcome to the squad, and you have the mindset to be able to do that. But if you don't have, and you're in year one or year two, or you haven't even built that consistency yet, this is for you. You should be listening in and thinking to yourself, damn, right, time to prove him wrong. Nothing I love more than somebody proving me wrong and getting more powerful. That's what we're all here for. I'm not here to be the naysayer. I've always said this. It's positive. Affirmations, you know, I hear, you know, so many motivational speakers and all this bollocks out there. And I, this is a swearing heavy podcast, I know. I'm sorry. But there's so many people just near, near, near talking. What you need is people to show you evidence of pushing yourself, pushing them mentally. It, you know, for me personally, it's that ability to run in the dark, run in the rain, you know, run in snow, for instance. Be being told I'm crazy by my family and my friends for being in all conditions or, you know, lifting heavy weights when I'm ill, even though I shouldn't, and having that mental ability to get through it or when I you know feel like I've got a headache and somebody's saying just go home and rest no this is what I'm talking about if you can push yourself further than everyone else yeah you're going to get called silly or man mental or any of these things but eventually everyone else will be looking to you to lead the way to lead the charge because let's be honest the weirdos the insane people the, the crazy ones, they're who we look to. They're entertaining. They're great. They're rememberable. But the people who just cruise and just do the norm and take rest days... Sound like a straight bitch when I listen to that motherfucker. ...are the ones that we are forgettable. They really are. I don't imagine Usain Bolt took any rest days before he broke the 100-meter record multiple times and did it with a massive grin on his face at the end of it, huh? Or Michael Phelps, when you look at his routine either, as well. 
the insane amount of calories he had to take in, the incessant need to win and to become one of the greatest uh, Olympians of all time. It's those moments that people will remember. There's also, for instance, one of my favourites, Michael Jordan, who is a great example of that mental madness that I talked about earlier. He said I took it personally for multiple things that were making a mountain out of a molehill. And I believe it was actually a really good thing for him to do. It became personal with me. That's all I needed for him to do that. And it, it became personal with me. He took scenarios that didn't need to become mentally crazy for, or that bring that demon, or for me, in my case, summoning Bunkai. Bunkai! And that's exactly what Michael Jordan did. If someone pissed him off in a game, he was like, all right, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, is that really how we're gonna play? I see how it is. I took it personally. And he did it again and again and again and again. And if somebody was like, you're not gonna do this, or if they're not going to train hard enough, he'd tell them. And he would want it because he wanted to be a serial winner. And you may say, but I don't want to be a serial winner. Fine. Enjoy your life. That's what we're here. Go to the next podcast. Go on. Move on. Because that's not what we're here for. Today is mental toughness day. Today is pushing yourself to your limits. Today is going the extra mile. Because everybody else can be mediocre. But you, you want to be greater than that. And if you're thinking to yourself, but I want the biscuits or the donuts and all. Yes, you can have them. Just make sure that you're consistent with the healthier foods. The healthier food should be 80% of the time, every time, okay? And whatever your hardest battle is, use it. For instance, for me, I was shit at running when I was younger. Now I utilize running. I couldn't do pull-ups or push-ups when I was younger. I now find them to be my favorite exercise. I take weaknesses and I turn them into strengths. I was terrible at maths when I was younger. I get a computer science degree. I was terrible at English when I was younger. I get English A-levels, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You see this theme. Take weaknesses, turn them into strengths, and you prove to yourself more than anything else that there are no weaknesses. One of the ones that I'm doing right now that I've talked about is that my driving test will come up in June. I'm going to drive for the first time. I'm going to get over that fear. I'm going to accomplish something that I've put off because of that. And to many, there, there's obviously the, the line of, oh, you should have done this long time ago. You're becoming a, an adult now. Shut up. <laughs> Genuinely, just shut up. That makes no sense. Everybody makes things sound more important than they actually are in terms of priorities. For me personally, I'd rather travel the world and have that on my life resume than driving a car like everybody else. How boring, let's be honest. How boring. Being like everybody else is boring. And if you have the willingness to push yourself and get this mental toughness and be a little bit mad and utilize that insane mindset of, I took it personally, Goggins mode, keep hammering, good, Bunkai. Bunkai! This is the way forward. If you can do that, if you can push to the very limits where every bone in your body is hurting or even just mentally where you're just like, this exam is draining me or this life, this job is tough, if you can get past it, you get to the next level. So, get to that next level. Keep pushing. Keep, create that consistency. Create a plan. Go away right now. Write something down that you're going to do and figure a way to keep doing it to the end, okay? And sometimes you're gonna find things that don't, you know, they become less of a priority for you. Those things may fade, and if they do fade, then they clearly weren't that important to you. Because that's the truth in life. Truth in life. <laughs> that was the truth in life. <laughs> <laughs> is the 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 stuff that actually means something to you if you really want something you'll do it so easy way to end the podcast positivity keep that mindset be a little bit mad and be mentally tough and activate bunkai bunkai this has been the Taylor's Tales podcast this has been Chris's Corner I've been your host Chris Taylor and as always I hope to see you this time next week Bye now. Nobody cares!
Nobody! And you need to shut up!